less than 24 hours after Liz Truss was forced out as UK's Prime Minister, the race is on to find her successor. Truss's runner-up, Rashi Sunak, is a likely candidate, along with former Prime Minister Boris Johnson and House of Commons leader Penny Mordaunt. Truss had a controversial 44 days in office, to say the least, filled with questions about her staying power. At one point during her tenure in office, a head of lettuce, you see there on the screen, uh, with a blonde wig was projected on Westminster Palace and the brash English tabloid. The Daily Star live streamed a lettuce wondering which would have a longer shelf life, Truss or the lettuce. Ultimately, the vegetable one. Please. Correspondent Charles Gibson is in London with the latest on who will fill the prime minister seat. Uh, Giles, good to see you again. So we know all about Boris Johnson, obviously. Because what can you tell us about the other two front runners? Well, look, I think at this stage we can at least rule out that that now famous or infamous lettuce. But uh, otherwise, we're looking at Rishi Sunak, as you say, one of the front runners here already, despite the fact that he hasn't even declared that he's actually in the race. He is a, a former chancellor of the Exchequer, a former finance minister here in the UK. Uh, he was in charge of steering the UK economy through some very uh, difficult waters during the coronavirus crisis. And he's also got a lot of credit recently because he actually uh, predicted during the last leadership contest over the summer this economic turmoil that we've seen in recent weeks off the back of Liz Truss's economic strategy, that now infamous mini-budget. As for Penny Mordaunt, she has cabinet-level experience. She's a former defence secretary, although was in that position pretty briefly. She's also popular amongst the Conservative Party members, amongst the grassroots. But look, right now there is just one name that is just looming over this race and that is Boris Johnson. Everybody here in Westminster, in the heart of London, really just waiting to find out if he's going to run or not. And tell us more about just kind of the, the mood or uh, the reaction so far. It's been a little less than 24 hours, but uh, the mood of the country after the resignation. Well, look, I've stood here in Parliament Square, right outside the Houses of Parliament. You've got statues of some of the most important figures in British political history to hear, you know, Winston Churchill, David Lloyd George. And yet, in recent weeks, recent months, it has felt like that, that famous shiny black door at 10 Downing Street has been turning into a bit of a revolving door. Take a listen. Right now, I think a lot of people, the public, would want a general election. And I think that's very fair since there have been, I think, six, now seven prime ministers in four years. And they're all conservative, so I think it's time for a, a big change. I think they need to look at the whole process because this is, uh, I don't know how many, three or four PMs in the, in the last three years or even less than that. So uh, something is not right. And the people of England don't deserve that. And look, remember as well that we have a new monarch here in the UK, King Charles III, and he is already on his looking at being on his second prime minister in the space of just a very, very short reign so far. So what's a deadline for nominees on Monday? That's just a few short days from now. How busy will Conservative Party be, uh, members be uh, over the weekend? Yeah, well, the way this is going to play out, the first real hurdle that potential candidates are going to face is getting a hundred of their Conservative Party colleagues in Parliament, MPs, to support them. They need to get those names together, those 100 plus names, up by Monday afternoon local time here in the UK, bearing in mind that there are only 350-ish Conservative MPs in Parliament. That's a pretty high bar for them to have to hit just to even get onto the ballot. In theory, the top two uh, names in the race would then go on to a, a, a contest amongst the Conservative uh, grassroots members, amongst the members of the party. But look, I was uh, speaking to a, a Tory MP last night, and he was telling me that his working theory is that this is all going to be over by Monday night next week, because he was saying his theory is that there will be two names who can get 100 plus Conservative MPs to support them. And then the second place person will face a lot of pressure to step down immediately so that this leadership contest can be wrapped up and some stability can be brought back to the party as well as the country.